Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're gonna spin the wheel with our Etherworks Marvel combo deck, which also features the full playset of Karn the Great Creator, as an extra way of finding Etherworks Marvel in our sideboard to increase consistency. So this is an energy combo deck built around Etherworks Marvel, a 4-mana legendary artifact from Kaladesh Remastered, saying whenever a permanent we control is put into a graveyard, we get one energy, and we can tap Marvel and pay six energy to look at the top six cards of our library, and we can cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost, so since we're actually casting a spell, we also get the cast trigger from Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, which lets us exile two target permanents, and then the 10-10 Indestructible Eldrassi also exiles the top 20 cards from the opponent whenever he attacks, so it can usually end the game in two attacks. So that's the powerful combo that our deck is capable of on turn 4 potentially, spin the wheel with Marvel, hit an Ulamog, exile two of the opponent's permanents, including lands potentially, and that's usually game over. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got the full playset of Lenor Elves to give us a bit of mana acceleration since we're trying to ramp out Karn the Great Creator to maybe get an Aetherworks Marvel, so having access to the extra mana from Elves really speeds up the deck. Then we also have the full playset of Attune with Aether, great way to generate two energy and search up a basic land, which is why we have a lower land count in this deck in general. Of course we also have some dual faced cards from Zendikar that uh, factor into that equation. Then at two mana we've got Servant of the Conduit, generates two energy and we can tap Servant and pay one energy to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, so it can also help us ramp, but for the most part we want to save our energy for Aetherworks Marvel activations. Then we've got three copies of Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot, with a fourth copy in the sideboard to search up with Karn, and when it enters the battlefield we gain three life and add three energy, and for two and a green we can sacrifice Puzzle Knot to gain three energy and three life once again, and if we sacrifice it while we have an Aetherworks Marvel in play, since it goes to the graveyard we get one additional energy, which can also make a difference. And then we've got the full play set of Harnessed Lightning, which gives us a bit of early interaction for opposing creatures. Since we choose target creature, then we get three energy, and we can pay any amount of energy to deal that much damage to that creature. So we can also use additional energy that we've got stored up, or we can potentially use Harnessed Lightning just to generate three energy, as long as we've got a creature to target, which can be useful if we need more energy for Aetherworks Marvel, and maybe the opponent doesn't have any creatures for us to kill anyway. We can also target our own creatures with it. Then at 3 mana, we've got a full playset of Rogue Refiner, a 3-2 creature that when it enters the battlefield draws a card and gets 2 energy, so a great value creature. And then a full playset of Valakut Awakening, which we can play as a tap land or as an instant, letting us put any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library, and then draw that many cards plus 1. So Valakut Awakening is very useful to potentially put some of these expensive cards back into our library that we don't really want to have in our hand, but are happy to hit with our Aetherworks Marvel, and we even have some shuffle effects with a with Aether to shuffle those cards back into our library afterwards. Then at 4 mana, two copies of Glimmer of Genius, which lets us cry two and then draw two, as well as gain two energy, so it just helps us find Aetherworks Marvel or Karn if we don't have one already, and generate a bit of energy. And then we've got three copies of Aetherworks Marvel, with a fourth copy in the sideboard. This is the centerpiece of the deck, and there's an interesting interaction with Aetherworks Marvel because it is legendary. If we play a second Marvel with one in play already, the end result is that we get two energy, because Marvel sees itself go to the graveyard, so we can potentially activate the first Marvel, then play the second one, get to energy, and since the second one is untapped, we can maybe spin the wheel once again and try and get lucky. And then we've got the full playset of Karn, the Great Creator, which says activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated, so it can be very effective against opposing artifact ramp decks. The plus one turns one of our non-creature artifacts into a creature, with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost, so it can potentially turn our Marvel into a 4-4 creature, which can help us pressure opposing planeswalkers, for example. And then the minus two is what we're most interested in, can search up an artifact from our sideboard and put it into our hand, and we've got a pretty long list of artifacts to search up, starting with Tormod Script as Graveyard Hate for 0 mana, Aether Spellbomb can be used to bounce an opposing creature, Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot if we just need more energy or life gain, Maze Mind Tome if we don't need anything specific and just want more card selection or card draw, Ratchet Bomb shines against opposing token decks, Spyglass can shut down activated abilities, Harvester for more energy and life gain, got Aetherworks Marvel, which is a card we're going to search up most often if we don't have one in play already. And then I also ended up including one of each Gearhulk, with Verger's Gearhulk, Torrential Gearhulk, which can get back some instants like Glimmer Genius or Harness Lightning. And then Combustible Gearhulk is actually quite synergistic in the deck as well, since we have some pretty high converted mana costs in the deck with Ulamog, Ugin, and Seagate Restoration. 
Then we've got Sky Sovereign, which is also great to turn into a creature with Karn's plus one ability, which also works very well with vehicles and can deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters a battlefield or attacks. Then we've got Statue, which is nice to ramp into to shut down the opponent, Meteor Golem as a catch-all answer, and Platinum Angel, which can win the game against some combo decks. And then looking at the top of our curve, two copies of Seagate Restoration, which is another dual face card that we can play untapped at the cost of three life, but is still a pretty nice hit with Aetherworks Marvel if we don't hit an Ulamog or Ugin as a way to draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hand plus one, and then we don't have any maximum hand size for the rest of the game. And then two copies of Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, which can function as a nice board wipe that doesn't get rid of our own Aetherworks Marvel, and that's also the reason why we want to main phase activate Marvel in case we find a Planeswalker so we can activate it in the same turn, and then the full playset of Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, which is usually the card we want to hit when we activate Marvel, and with our four copies of Awakening we can always put it back on the bottom of our library if we happen to draw it, and then going over the mana base, of course we've got six dual faced cards, and four copies of Attune to find basic lands and plenty of mana elves, so we actually only have 16 normal lands, with an island, a mountain and two forests to search up with Attune, and then four of the green red pathway, four botanical sanctum, and four ether hub, which also generates one energy when it enters battlefield, could also potentially play Fabled Passage, which also generates an energy if we sacrifice it with a Marvel in play, but I didn't want to have too many tap lands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. It's not going to be the fastest Aetherworks Marvel activation ever, but it's going to be a consistent one with plenty of energy here to back it up. And then usually just get a forest here. Can maybe get a mountain next. Opponent on a red-green dinosaur deck with a turn 2 Huntmaster, so we could be taking quite a bit of damage in the next couple turns. Could also decide to just cast Awakening in the hopes of finding Marvel. And then Aether Hub will give us the 6 point of energy needed to spin the wheel. Alright. Marauding Raptor into Ripjaw. And they can give it haste and attack for 4. Serpent with a nice start. Yeah, just casting Awakening is probably the way to go. Question is whether or not we put Karn back as well. Questing beasts. Yeah, it feels like I just need to give myself the best chance of finding Marvel since playing Karn first is just gonna be too slow. We're at eight. So I need to awakening. Another Frostodon. Not sure why I didn't play it first. But we'll keep the Ether Hub for energy 6. Alright, there's Marvel. Although, of course, we did put some copies of Ulamog on the bottom, which we won't be able to find, but hitting an Ugin would be pretty nice here. And there he is. Minus 4. And next turn we can sacrifice Puzzle Knot, Harness Lightning maybe, so we should be able to spin again. Frostodon dies to Ugin. So we can sack Puzzle Knots, which will make 4 energy, play another one, and see what we can find. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, well, got lucky to hit an Ugin off of our Aetherworks Marvel on turn 4, but yeah, opponent had a scary start as well, so if we didn't hit an Ulamog or Ugin there, we would have been dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. So this hand, we kind of want to cast Awakening to get rid of Ugin and Ulamog, but if we cast Awakening, we don't have many other lands available, so it seems a little sketchy. This is better. And we don't feel bad about putting Ulamog on the bottom. And a tune on turn one is excellent. So we'll get probably just a forest and then I can play Pathway as a red source. 
So we'll have turn 2 Lightning, turn 3 Rogue Refiner. Opponent on some sort of white ramp deck. Um, yeah, I guess we'll still play Pathway here just in case. If my opponent's on a Solemnity 9 life deck, we don't want to see Solemnity because that can shut down our energy production. It's going to be a Hedron Archive instead. Play Sanctum before it's too late. And then Karn will also shut down any artifact ramp. So that's going to be nice too. Another Archive. Into Solemn Simulacrum. So I don't necessarily want to attack because we want to keep Refiner to protect Karn. And it's also better to trade off our creatures once we have a Marvel in play. So Karn is going to be very useful. And probably okay to get Marvel here. And stay back. Ugin can uh, destroy Rogue Refiner, I suppose, and then Simulacrum can attack Karn. But Ugin can't take out Karn because it's colorless. Alright, so... What's the play? Don't have to play Marvel just yet. We do want to protect Karn if possible. So... I could harness lightning simulacrum and then play elf play a tapped awakening. That seems fine. And then next turn we should be able to spin the wheel. Since we can also potentially get a Puzzle Knot or... We'll see. Secrets manifest before you. The downside of minusing Karn, of course, is that we unlock the opponent's artifacts again. Which we may want to avoid. Just getting like a Sky Sovereign could also be worth it to take out Ugin. Alright, the tune was the perfect draw, because now we can spin the wheel and keep Karn in play. What's the tune? Now my opponent does have a blast zone. And I guess I can sink six mana into it. Which would put it up to four, which is enough to kill Karn and Marvel, but it would also blow up double Hedron Archive. So we'll spin the wheel, and we hit Ulamog, which can get rid of Blast Zone and Ugin. Bonin blows up the Elf, which does generate one energy at least. And then we'll plus. Alright, so we're in pretty good shape now. Willamog in play. My opponent uses field, we also get one more energy. Opponent still only has six mana here and scoops it up. So yeah, seeing the power of Karn, the great creator against these artifact ramp decks, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a hand that's actually not too bad. A tune provides a ton of energy, finds more lands, and then we can maybe at some point cast the Awakening to get rid of Ugin and draw into Karn or Marvel. Facing Spear Spear. And draw second Ugin, so definitely gonna cast the Awakening. Probably just get Mountain for now in case we want to harness Lightning next turn. Electrostatic field. 
And there's Marvel. All right, I guess change of plan. Or do I... Yeah, I might just play Awakening Tapped, Attune, the next turn Refiner, and then Marvel. And then we'll have just enough energy. I wouldn't be able to hit Ugin with Marvel, but hitting an Ulamog is better anyway. So we'll see what the burn deck can do in the meantime. Maybe this is a second right deck, trying to get us to 10 life. See Light of the Stage and Alchemists. Alright. Well, let's hope uh, there's an Ulamog in the top six. The light of the stage puts us to 14. Find Spikefield Mountain. So we're at 11. So if the opponent's plan is to second right us, they can't activate Alchemist end of turn, otherwise field would put us to 9 before the second right resolves. So we'll know whether or not they have it based on whether they activate Alchemist. But yeah, we're just gonna marvel and spin. And then we might take out the opponent's lanes here. And there's Ulamog. So do I go for the creatures or the lands? If we fear second right, I should probably attack their lands. But then I might die to just random burn. And yeah, I think I should go after their lands. No point in attacking with Rogue Refiner. Opponent's got 46 cards, so it's going to take more than two attacks with Ulamog to win. And we don't have a ton of ways to generate energy in hand to spin the Marvel again. Of course, finding a Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot could be nice too, so just Falcon Awakening into Puzzle Knot can buy us a lot of time. And note our opponent did not activate Alchemist end of turn, so confirms our suspicions that they might have a second right in hand. But we'll find out once we attack with Ulamog whether or not they have it in their deck. Another Harness Lightning. Yeah, I don't have any way of dealing damage to myself at instant speed since Harness Lightning only targets creatures. So I think my best bet is Awakening. Get rid of probably my entire hand, maybe except for Mountain. Or I guess get rid of Mountain too since we might just draw another land anyway. And then hope to find Puzzle Knots. Puzzle Knot puts me to 14. They can deal 2. Put me to 12. I guess I would still die to a second right. So what are my other options? I can cast Double Harness Lightning. So maybe that's the play. And then hope to hit another Ulamog. So we'll attack first. And do we see second right? We do, there it is. So we'll harness lining, probably just Ulamog, so we don't risk my opponent killing the creature in response and not having the energy. Although I guess if they killed my creature in response, field would put us to 10 and then second right would no longer be lethal. So maybe they're off the second right plan now. Alright, just gonna shock my face. So 
now do I just harness lightning alchemists before it untaps? I think just spinning the marvel might be better. Because we can still find another Ulamog, or at the very least the Puzzle Knots, which would be pretty effective. Alright, so Puzzle Knots I think is the way to go. Could also Karn the Great Crater minus get a one mana card, but there's nothing relevant for one mana. So yeah, let's just gain three. And then next turn we can gain three again to spin the Marvel. And hopefully we're not dead at eight. Uh oh, shock. That represents four more damage. So yeah, we're just dead here. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's actually not too bad. Restoration counts as a lane, so we can attune for Mountain. And then we've got a few ways of generating energy for turn for Marvel. Facing Goblins. So this is just about being as fast as possible. Harness Lightning to take out Prospector could be useful, although if they sack it in response, it would fizzle. So then uh, we wouldn't be able to generate any energy. Also, Harness Lightning on Prospector is a way to avoid dying to a turn 3 Muxus. I think I would still rather play Servant here. And then I have to decide which line to play here, since we might need to get multiple Aether Hubs in play to have enough energy at some point. And then Sanctum also factors into the equation and Mountain, so... I think I'll go with Aether Hub, Servant... That way, if I draw another Aether Hub next turn, I could technically get up to 6 energy, although I guess we need 1 energy from Servant to cast Marvel. Uh, just gonna be a Chieftain. I'm happy to block here. And getting rid of Prospector now means I can actually cast my Harness Lightning. So then... I can go Mountain, Harness Lightning, next turn take three, or I can go Sanctum, pay one energy from Ether Hub, and then I'll have to spend essentially three energy, so I guess I wouldn't have enough for a Marvel spin, so I guess uh, I should go Mountain and then take three next turn, take out Chieftain now. So the decision with Ether Hub maybe didn't quite pan out. Playing a uh, Mountain or Sanctum would have been better. All right, let's see if we can hit an Ugin the Spirit Dragon. It's probably our best hit here. Well, I'll take an Ulamog. Get rid of War Chief. And let's see if I get rid of a token. I guess I'm still dead to a chieftain top deck. I guess I might get rid of a token anyway, since otherwise we might get swarmed. If our opponent plays a Krenko next turn, I guess it could be bad too. If I play Ulamog, they attack with all, I take three, down to three. Yeah, I think I should get rid of a token here, or a 1-1. One -one. All 
All right, Snoop reveals Castle Embrith, which is actually somewhat problematic here. All right, am I dead? I guess if Ulamog attacks, we mill the castle, and then I can plus Karn on Marvel to have a blocker. If I just plus Karn, stay back, I guess I'm also alive, but at least we start dealing some damage with Ulamog. And then next turn I can minus Karn, get Puzzle Knots, and then spin Marvel again. I think that's the plan. Of course, we could hit something worse than Castle, but I think that's the risk I'm willing to take. Alright, Mountain's good. Yeah, taking that 3 damage of Seagate Restoration actually making a pretty huge difference this game. They found a Warchief on top, so I guess now I'm just dead. Warchief attack with all, I take 4. But our opponent didn't see the line. Probably start by attacking. In case we hit another Ulamog. Which we did. So we should have been dead to that uh, Snoop playing Warchief off the top. Unless I'm missing something. But yeah, close game nonetheless. And my opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think about this hand? Yeah, it's okay. A tune gets mountain. And then we've got a few ways to potentially play out this hand. We can play Awakening Tapped and then just cast Glimmer. We can cast Awakening, get rid of some of these Seagate Restorations in the hopes of finding Marvel or Karn. But uh, turn 1 attune into turn 2 Servants is probably how we're gonna kick things off. Opponent with a tapped watery grave. Now that we drew Ugin, it's a little bit more appealing to cast the Awakening. Croxa makes me discard. I guess we'll just get rid of Ugin. And then we've got a few options. Probably just playing this untapped. And then. I can decide between Glimmer or Awakening. Probably just gonna cast the Glimmer. Which will put us back down to 5 energy total. And that's fine. And Rogue Refiner is not a bad one. And a Karn, which can grab a Marvel. So probably want to get Karn in play as soon as possible. And then I can take another 3 from Restoration, so I can attack Scions. Or we can play Awakening. So next turn I can go maybe Marvel plus Harness Lightning. Sure. Their opponent discarded Frantic Inventory with uh, Royal Science last turn. That's a nice one to discard. So we'll see whether they have some discard or counter spells. Could have also waited a turn with Minus Incarn for Marvel in case they have a Thought Seize here.
But yeah, we see Bedevil, which could have also killed our Karn and then prevented us from finding the Marvel. Alright, so opponent's got one mana. Play this untapped. Play Marvel, we can pay for Spell Pierce. And then I want to keep red mana untapped if I can. Although I guess it doesn't matter all that much. And then Harness Lightning our own Servant, so they don't have a shock. Pay zero. Activate Marvel. Find Ulamog. And I don't think I care about science. This is minus eight, so we'll just get rid of two lanes. Get rid of the two red sources, which is the only color we can really cut off. All right. Let's see how they deal with Ulamog. And then next turn we can maybe Karn. Get another Puzzle Knot to activate Marvel once again. Thought Erasure probably takes the second Karn. So now the plans Rogue Refiner into hopefully more energy, although there's a good chance Ulamog will be enough to win the game here. Double Rogue Refiner. I suppose I might be better off sending Ulamog at my opponent's face and then Servant at Scion so they can't ultimate. And then next turn Ulamog will be lethal. Nickel Bolas can have my Ulamog. What is my strategy here? So they can now chum block. And then I guess we'll uh refine her again. If I find Ether Hub, I can spin the wheel. Then with three cards remaining, they're probably just gonna get milled out. Foolish coward. I guess there's a risk that my opponent has a Thassa's Oracle in their deck and can somehow win the game, but I doubt it. Sadly, Ulamog's indestructible. Also, they probably would have died to the rogue refiners just the same. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Allurus of the Dream Den deck. And what do we think about this hand? I guess we're missing... Hmm. Never mind, we've got the green mana, blue and red. We've got at least four energy. Yeah, this is probably okay. Kick things off with a tapped awakening. Yeah. And then we just need to find two more energy somewhere. All right, opponent on a black-white enchantment deck and there's another servant, so. That's the energy we need. Let's see if they have a turn to Spirit Dancer. Nope, Cartouche on Eidolon. And a Sentinel's Eyes, that's okay. Karn's also decent. Although I think I'm just gonna play Refiner, not waste any energy. And then next turn, maybe play Marvel. Mm. 
And against black white, given that they have Lurus as companion, there's not that many ways they can give their creatures flying. I guess there's a two mana enchantment that draws a card and gives flying. So that's something we should be concerned about when taking too much damage. So question is whether I chump or just take 10. But then next turn I could be dead to a flying enchantment. So I think I should chump here. And then... I guess I'm better off going Servant plus Elves, which is a little safer than just playing Marvel, even though playing Marvel and chumping produces one energy. Karn also could potentially get, like, um, an Aether Spellbomb to bounce Eidolon, which could be effective, or the token. And then do we take five? I think we do. Spin the wheel, which doesn't hit anything too amazing. I guess I can Karn and then minus to get Spellbomb. And then next turn I can get maybe Puzzle Knot to make more energy. And then it's probably fine to pass. And then we can bounce one of their creatures if they try and give it flying somehow. If they have a Karmatra's Blessing, that could be bad. But I guess so be it. Probably chump Eidolon bounce the token. And then Lurus gives him access to glitters once again. Alright, so. What's the best course of action? You will not We've got quite a few options. Probably just uh, Puzzle Knot Spin the Wheel again. Don't have 7 mana to play a Platinum Angel, which could also just buy us a ton of time here. Although they can eventually maybe kill it with dead weight. But uh, yeah, I think just going for Puzzle Knots is fine here. And we hit another Marvel. If I gain two energy, that's still not enough to spin again. So I guess Rogue Refiner it is. Mogus' favorite takes out Elf. Alright, if they have a dead weight, we're dead. Thoughtseize probably takes Karn or Glimmer. We're gonna have to chump. But we get to spin again, and there's still plenty of Ulamogs and Ugins in the deck we can hit. So Eidolon draws a card thanks to Mogus's favor. And uh, yeah. Spin the wheel. Still nothing. Hit a Seagate Restoration. Glimmer. Restoration might be better. Although I'm probably going to draw all the Ulamogs and Ugins now. Although I guess if we draw Ugin we're pretty close to casting it, although not quite yet. 
Harness Lightning doesn't quite do it. Don't know if I want to shuffle my deck. I guess I maybe do. And then we can still Harness Lightning to potentially take out the Hateful Eidolon. Well, we didn't get very lucky with Marvel spins, but I guess it has made the game more interesting. Mogus's favor resolves. And while I could take out Hateful Eidolon, I don't think I want to, because then they're going to draw a whole bunch of cards and I'm still alive here at one. Could also take out Lurus. I guess in response here, that's okay. And then next turn we can just cast Ugin, minus one. Although I kind of want to spin the wheel first. Alright, found an Ulamog. And our opponent explodes. All right, so a lengthy game against black-white auras, but eventually Ulamog and Ugin cast in the same turn. So yeah, this uh, Aetherworks Marvel deck has been doing pretty well for me, and I definitely like the addition of Karn the Great Creator. Gives the deck a lot more consistency and kind of a plan B in case the opponent has answers to Aetherworks Marvel. You can still get win conditions out of the sideboard, and it's just more fun to have access to all those sideboard options. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.